Hi students, welcome back to our read aloud of The Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane. Before we start on chapter 13, we're not going to talk this time so much about vocabulary as we are about the history of where Edward is. So this book was written um, to take place in a setting in America around the 1930s. And at this time in the 1930s, there was a lot of problems in the United States. A lot of people, for a variety of reasons, lost their jobs. A lot of people who had farmed land for many, many years, suddenly there was a drought and there was no rain. So crops like corn and wheat just did not grow. And this caused people also to lose jobs and sadly to become homeless. During this time, some people left their homes and traveled along railroad um, lines. So we see here an empty rail car, and sometimes people would jump into these empty rail cars to travel to another town looking for work or looking for food. Sometimes this was a place to rest and to sleep. And we're going to see that Edward ends up in an empty rail car like this. If you've ever read the book, The Boxcar Children, very, very similar to the setting that they live in. They live in an old, empty railroad car, similar to this one. Another thing we're going to see um, in the book is a bedroll. And this is kind of a, a time when you would not buy a sleeping bag. If you were stuck sleeping outside or in a rail car, you might take an old blanket and roll it up tightly like this and you call that your bedroll. At night you would unroll this, lay it on the ground, and you would have your own bed. We're going to see that Edward gets rolled up in a bedroll like this and that's one of the ways that Bull carries him around as he travels during the day. And then lastly we're going to see a term, tramps. Tramps is not a super um, positive term, it's kind of a negative term. For people who are traveling from town to town, looking for food, looking for work, and this is an example of a realistic picture of a group of tramps who are doing exactly that. So let's move on and let's take a look at chapter 13. Here we've got an excellent example of an illustration that shows the mood of this chapter. Here we've got Bull. He doesn't look especially clean or well kept, but he's carrying Edward on his back in something that looks a lot like a bedroll to me. They traveled on foot. They traveled in empty rail cars. They were always on the move. But in truth, said Bull, we are going nowhere. That, my friend, is the irony of our constant movement. Edward, Roll, Edward Rode in Bull's bedroll, slung over Bull's shoulder with only his head and ears sticking out. Bull was always careful to position Rabbit so that he was not looking up or down, but was instead forever looking behind him at the road they had just traveled. At night, they slept on the ground, under the stars. Lucy, after her initial disappointment about Edward being unfit for consumption, took a liking to him and slept curled up beside him. Sometimes she even rested her muzzle on his china stomach, and then the noises she made in her sleep, whimpering and growling and chuffing, resonated inside Edward's body. To his surprise, he began to feel a deep tenderness for the dog. During the night, while Bull and Lucy slept, Edward, with his ever-open eyes, stared up at the constellations. He said their names, and then he said the names of the people who loved him. He started with Abilene and then went to Nellie and Lawrence, and from there to Bull and Lucy, and then he ended with, again with Abilene. Abilene, Nellie, Lawrence, Bull, Lucy, Abilene. See, Edward told Pellegrina, I'm not like the princess. I know about love. There were times, too, when Bull Luce, and Lucy gathered around a campfire with other tramps. Bull was a good storyteller and an even better singer. You know, it's interesting that I find on these couple of pages 
that again, Edward is looking up at those constellations. He's looking up at the stars at night. And remember, we talked about how the fact that those stars are comforting to Edward because he's seen them in every setting that he's been in. When he was with Abilene, was when he was with um, Nellie and Lawrence, and now when he was with Bull and Lucy, he can look up at those same stars. And we also see Edward reflecting about that story that Pellegrina told about the princess and the warthog. And again, Lawrence is saying to Pellegrina, I've changed. I'm not like that princess who didn't know about love and did not know how to show love. I know who loves me, Abilene, Nellie, Lawrence, Bull, Lucy, and I love them back. I'm not like that princess, is what Edward is saying. I know how to show love. And here's a great picture, again, depicting the mood of this chapter, with Edward sitting on Bull's knee, and there's Lucy curled up beside them, beside the campfire. And we can see from the picture that Bull's clothes don't look super neat. There's some holes in them, and the bottom of his pants are tattered. So again, this kind of depicts the fact that Bull is a hobo or a tramp living outside, traveling with Lucy. Sing for us, Bull, the men shouted. Bull sat with Lucy leaning against his leg, and Edward balanced on his right knee, and he sang from somewhere deep inside himself. Just as Edward could feel Lucy's whimpers and growls resonate through his body at night, he could also feel the deep, sad sound of Bull's songs move through him. Edward loved it when Bull sang. And he was grateful to, to Bull, too, for sensing that a dress was not the right kind of clothing for Edward. Malone, said Bull one night, it's not my desire to offend you or to comment negatively on your choice of garb, but I'm forced to tell you that you stick out like a sore thumb in that princess dress. And also again, with no wish to offend you, that dress has seen better days. Nellie's beautiful dress had not fared well at the dump or in its subsequent ramblings with Bull and Lucy. It was so torn and dirty and full of holes that it barely resembled a true dress anymore. I have a solution, said Bull, and I hope that it meets with your approval. He took his own knit stocking cap and cut a big hole in the top of it and two small holes on the side of it, and then he took off Edward's dress. Look away, Lucy, he said to the dog. Let's not embarrass Malone by staring at his nakedness. Bull slid the hat over Edward's head and pulled it down and poked his arms through the smaller holes. There you go, he said to Edward. Now you just need some pants. The pants Bull made himself, cutting up several red handkerchiefs and sewing them together so that they formed a makeshift covering for Edward's long legs. Now you have the proper outlook, outlaw look, said Bull standing back to admire his work. Now you look like a rabbit on the run. And that ends chapter 13 until we start again with chapter 14.